Hello. Welcome back. We are doing our 100,000 subscriber lightsaber giveaway. Let's get straight into the winners. Shout out to Paladin for winning the Luke Skywalker lightsaber. The next lightsaber we'll be giving away is the Darth Maul one. And the Darth Maul lightsaber is being given away to Mr. Jasp. And the last winner of our lightsaber giveaway for 100,000 subscribers is Sergeant Stupidity. Congratulations, you three. Sergeant, you are winning the Vanguard lightsaber. Galaxy will be reaching out to you guys very soon. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you all for 100,000 subscribers and enjoy today's video. Our story begins during Coruscant's renowned festival of life. Palpatine always hated this period of celebration. It didn't just happen on Coruscant, it was mostly just an inner core celebration. To him, it was a waste of time. People gathering, celebrating, giving gifts to each other. Gifts and gifts and gifts. It was seriously the worst thing he could have ever experienced. He dejected the idea so much that when he and Plagueis were making their preparations for the Clone Wars, Sidious almost denied becoming Chancellor, let alone Senator, because he didn't want to be anywhere near the celebrations. He was always such a brute with his extra small art. He never had it within him to find joy in moments like this. He longed for the Clone Wars, and with nearly a year until they were supposed to begin, Palpatine couldn't wait anymore. The celebrations on Coruscant began early this time of year. It all started at the centerpiece in Monument Plaza at Mount Umate. From the Chancellor's residence, he could see it. In a way, he felt like the king of the galaxy, looking down on all those puny creatures as he celebrated whatever the festival was. He looked at it like it was pathetic and wasteful of time. However, he couldn't help but stand at the edge of his balcony and look down at the people. He could hear the music and the celebrations from here. It cut through the ambience of the spacecraft traveling by. Coruscant's skyline ambience was one of the only enjoyable things to Sidious about the massive city. However, he had little to no interest in hearing the people down there celebrate. It was a burden. Typically, Sidious would leave his balcony doors open so he could hear the skyline ambience when he worked. Now he had to hear cheering and singing, and the worst thing of all, happiness. Cities closed the doors, and what made it worse is that he couldn't escape it. So he decided he would make sure the celebrations came to an end. In theory, he could rip the celebrations down before the Clone Wars, the reality being that when he won the Clone Wars, the celebrations would continue. So he would stop it now. It wouldn't stop after the rise of the Empire, so he knew what he would do. The week-long festival got progressively larger, so on the last day, people would gather up on Monument Plaza and celebrate the largest part of the festival. This of course happened across the city, but the biggest part of the festival happened at Mount Umeit, so he would go about bringing an end to the celebration. The worst part about the festival of life is the fact that the Jedi even got to celebrate too. A number of Jedi Masters, some of which from the High Council, would show up and help make sure everything was in order for the celebrations to begin. They would also participate in some of the singing and so forth. The big thing the Jedi did were daily giveaways for people, and then on the last day of the celebration they'd do a massive giveaway. The themes were always different, so people didn't know what to expect each year. Obviously, with Yoda around for nearly 900 years, he had new ideas that hadn't been seen in multiple lifetimes. Sidious watched down with a scowl as he waited for the opportune idea to present itself in his mind. What Sidious found odd is that despite Plagueis being the Dark Lord of the Sith before him, he actually enjoyed the festival. Truthfully, how could one not? Besides the overzealous amounts of unbridled love and affection towards random people around them, there were fine delicacies, drinks galore, and food from systems around the galaxy. It was the best place to be, and truthfully, Plagueis never understood why Palpatine never got involved with it. As Hego Damask, Plagueis would even contribute, using his large sums of wealth to pay for big floats or new sound systems or stands for food vendors, whatever they needed. He didn't even do it begrudgingly. He loved the entire thing. As a Sith, one would, especially Palpatine, expect him to hate it and wish to make an example of them. But nope, it was one of the few things that drove Sidious even madder about his master. He couldn't wrap his mind around the people being so happy. It was a week where people would just be nicer than usual, one where they'd put individual differences aside to be warm towards each other. And what was remarkable is that, on Coruscant at least, every time a festival came and went, the people would find a new reason to be kinder to each other after it ended. It was a kindness that didn't wish for something in return. It was a kindness that only wanted happiness for the other, and in doing so, helped to be reciprocated, while being reciprocated was never the intention. Palpatine began scheming, and into the night he continued doing so. He was truthfully miserable about the whole thing. The following day, Master of the Order Mace Windu showed up at his mansion and brought him a present. Brilliant. Sidious knew it was coming and he put this little extra excited face on and played the joyful old man, telling Windu he was thankful and blah blah blah. It was really an easy way to get over the conversation and get back to what he was doing. Sidious came back in and rolled his eyes and grumbled to himself over the whole experience. He hated when the Jedi came to him with gifts. He still looked at it and he picked his curiosity. 
Okay, not for nothing, the Jedi typically had really decent gifts. This year, it was a piece of jewelry from a fine Malastarian jeweler. Palpatine pulled it out and examined it. The shiny piece reflected off the light into his face. He smiled at it and then shoved it back down. No, there was no enjoying this. Palpatine put it back in the beautiful box and left the room. He went back to his office, which had huge windows in it, and he could see the second day of the celebration beginning. He requested for Dooku to come visit him, but Dooku couldn't until the following day. He was attending a similar event on Sereno. It wasn't quite the Festival of Light, they called it the Festival of Stars on Sereno. Regardless, it was basically the same thing, so Palpatine hated it even more. The fact that both his master and apprentice took up celebration on this day made his skin crawl. Even more than that, his future pupil loved it. Anakin and Obi-Wan went to Monumental Plaza every year for the celebration. Skywalker used to get a kick out of using the Force to do tricks for people. Obi-Wan never cared for it, but Anakin was a show-off and he got a rush out of being the center of attention in the plaza. Palpatine muttered to himself that Skywalker would have to lose that before he became Vader. Of course, for Anakin, it changed within him every year. The first time was the greatest thing ever, but as he got older, the magic never left for him. He still got to enjoy it, despite hating being inside the Jedi Temple all the time. Sidious continued trying to plan up ideas, but he didn't decide on anything drastic. He just wanted to make a large part of the festival grind to a standstill. He couldn't come up with anything, a good part of it due to him losing his mind over the music playing in the background while he was working on his plans. He knew he should have gone to Naboo during this period. That's what he usually did, just as a means to avoid the entire thing. But he wasn't able to this time because of something in the Senate. The following day, Dooku came to Coruscant so he and Palpatine could concoct an idea to stop everything for the Festival of Life. Truthfully, Dooku was not on board with this. He thought it to be a bit grinchy, so he expressed some personal disdain for the idea. But with a quick silence, he wasn't really able to combat what Sidious wanted. Instead, he decided that the best idea would be to steal all their celebration equipment. Perhaps it would be a good way to end their celebration. Without their equipment, then they wouldn't be able to sing or give gifts or anything of the sort. While Palpatine was no expert, he also knew that most people were last-minute shoppers, so if he shut down stores, he could force people to have no gifts to give. Then what? They'd be outraged. They wouldn't be able to give, but most of all, they wouldn't be able to receive. How preposterous! Dooku kind of thought this was below the whole Sith thing. Like, they were meant to be taking down the Republic or whatever, but this was not that. This was weird. Sidious clearly didn't care. His main priority was stopping the incessant celebrating and noise. Dooku and Sidious planned all day for what they would do brainstorming the ideas, and then finally getting the one they believed would be the most effective at stopping the Festival of Life. Palpatine was enthralled. After a full day of work, trying to concoct their idea, they went to sleep. Dooku fell asleep on the couch in one of the living rooms, and he was watching the live coverage of the celebration before one of his late-night talk shows came on. Palpatine, on the other hand, was tossing and turning inside of his own room. He was really annoyed. He just couldn't get the idea of the festival out of his mind. It's like it plagued him. Anything with a somewhat happy vibe to it just made his tiny heart burst with rage. So he got up and started to wander the icy cold mansion. He wore his Sith slippers and grabbed himself some cookies and walked to his balcony. He saw the live coverage that Dooku was watching and he nearly had a conniption. Palpatine sat down with his cookies and blue milk and watched over the city. The ambience was dying down and so were the celebrations. They weren't singing as much anymore because the kids were all going to sleep. In a couple days, Harper would come to visit them at night and leave them gifts. The Harper was a mythical beast from the days long before the cities of Coruscant were built. The original natives of the planet called Harpa a giver of life, as the creatures only came around certain times of year, and they were seen as good luck charms, typically associated with large groupings of birds as well. So as the centuries went by, the myth of the Harpa outlived the creatures, and the people of Coruscant gave them new life as the bringer of gifts during the Festival of Light. Monumental plazas where most of this took place. People could celebrate at home, of course, but the idea was Harpa would go to the square and leave gifts for people all over the place. There was room because there were thousands of locations around the plaza for people to celebrate, because it was massive. The buildings surrounding the plaza were also utilized. Of course, Harpa wouldn't just go there, but the main point of the interest was the spectacle that was in the plaza. The following day, Dooku and Palpatine planned out how they were going to make it work, and the operations of such a plan, which forced Dooku to bring Techno Union droids to Coruscant so they could get rid of all the gifts left behind by Harpa. It was another miserable day for Sidious. The celebration got louder than it was the day before. Dooku was growing even more tired of this, but it would only be a couple more days until it was over and done with. The day before everything went down, Anakin and Obi-Wan stopped by the Chancellor's mansion. Dooku wasn't seen at the mansion, as he was hiding. Anyways, Anakin brought Palpatine a small box and told him that it was a gift he made for him for the Festival of Light, but he couldn't open it up until the following morning. Palpatine found the gesture kind, but he was going to do the same thing as he did with the previous gift, examine it, and then probably forget about it. Plus, he had important plans to tend to. Skywalker was giddy with excitement, and Obi-Wan gave a greeting of hope that Palpatine would have a great Festival of Light. Palpatine wanted to die. It never ended. 
The night couldn't come fast enough. As the day continued, he was getting more and more antsy. Everything was ready to go. All they needed to do was act. Before they went, Palpatine slipped in the bathroom and clocked his head in the bathroom sink. He was transported to another world, where he spoke to his master. Like his encouraged, the Clone War plan, but found this petty war with the people of Coruscant to be a distraction. The little entanglement between Palpatine and Plagueis was tense, but Palpatine just scoffed, telling his former teacher that he was dead. There was nothing he could do about it. Plagueis disappeared and Palpatine got up. Palpatine didn't actually clock his head on the counter. He just woke up from a midday old man nap. How odd. Whatever. Everything was pretty much ready to go. And then when the sun set, he and Dooku waited for everything to quiet down. Harpa would probably be in Monumental Plaza in the coming hours. Palpatine and Dooku sat on the balcony and watched and watched and watched, and yet nothing happened. So the two of them moved to the kitchen to grab some Sith cookies and blue milk. By the time they came out, the presents had been delivered. How was Harpa so good at this? Harpa must have known. Palpatine and Dooku had to make a call, so they finished their cookies with their blue milk and descended onto the plaza. The Techno Union droids were a great help with this, but they took down all the lights and all the decorations. They stole all the presents and gifts. They took all the food, oh so swift. The plaza was shrinking and their pockets were filling. Oh, Dooku and Palpatine, Droid 1 and Droid 2, up past Droid 5 and 10, took everything, even one lonely bin. They cleared it all, and with a blink of an eye, in one large hall, Harper's gifts were gone on the fly. Palpatine and Dooku were gone before the first sight of dawn, and when they returned to the mansion with all the gifts and supplies they stole from the plaza, they ran to the balcony. The sun was preparing to rise, so they were waiting. Palpatine grabbed the little gift that Anakin gave to him, and he shuffled back to the balcony where Dooku was, as he looked down at the plaza with shame. Dooku wished he could take it all back, truthfully. He turned to Palpatine, who opened up the little package. He pulled out a globe-shaped object that was wrapped in cloth, likely a Jedi towel or something. He looked at the gift wrapped in cloth and put it down. Next to it, he saw a small handwritten note that read as this. A Chancellor works so much, focused on people and such, aspiring to guide and to give, for what will likely outlive. So a gift so you can know, what through only you can grow, a people inspired by who, a Chancellor that can only be you. At the end, the name was scribbled in as Anakin Skywalker, and Palpatine turned towards Dooku, who looked over at him with a blank expression. Dooku would rather convey something else, but he couldn't because Palpy would likely get upset. Sheev looked at the little object in his hand, wrapped in cloth. He pulled the cloth off of it, and he saw the lint pull from the towel. He looked at it with a smile. The Jedi weren't able to do much or have much, but it was a globe. A model of Coruscant, if you will. One that Anakin built from scratch out of supplies and objects found around the temple. Actually, Ayla Sakura helped Anakin put it together. Pieces of the globe stuck out to represent the large cities on the planet. Palpatine smiled at it and then looked back at the letter, forgetting about the entire plan or anything he had just done the night before. He held it up and watched the sun slowly rise as it glimmered across the top of the globe. There was a little stand and he set the globe down on the stand, and then his attention was drawn elsewhere. City smiled as he realized that the Festival of Light would not come, realizing that Harpa did not come to visit them, and then he paused. And Palpy put a hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the patio. It started in low, and then it started to grow. A wonderful rising harmony grew over the city as people of Coruscant returned to the plaza to see it empty, and while it seemed like the holiday had come crashing down, the sound wasn't sad, it was glad. Palpatine was so upset, confused, and not understanding. He watched the people come together in joy, and Palpy with his Palpy feet ice cold on the patio stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags. Palpy was so confused, but perhaps he had missed the point the entire time. What if the festival didn't come from what you asked for? What if the festival of light perhaps meant a little bit more? Palpatine stood up with a sense of triumph. Dooku nearly fell out of his seat as he turned over and looked at him. Palpatine looked to the horizon and then the globe that was gifted to him. Some may say that old Palpatine's heart grew three times that day. He told Dooku that the festival was more than what he made it out to be. It was so much more than the gifts. He waved Dooku over. As the people came together in jubilee, even the Jedi too, Palpatine rushed the gifts all the way back down to the plaza. The people were still joyously enjoying each other's presence when Palpatine came down and handed out gifts and food and tossed their boxes and presents. They welcomed him with happiness and brought him to their side. Anakin was the first one to be there, and he was so joyful that his older friend came and told him how happy he was that he finally showed. Anakin never saw Palpatine here, and he finally came down. Dooku, on the other hand, found his former teacher, and there was a reunion that brought them happiness that they hadn't seen in years. The joy couldn't be overstated, as all the people came together in this grand moment of joy and happiness. It was a celebration unlike any other before, but as per tradition, it would only add to what followed in the coming years. Sidious didn't find just the true meaning on the festival, but with a heart three times as large, able to put away his anger and all of his disenchanted views on life altogether. 
he became a person filled with love and happiness. He, for the first time in his life, was able to find himself. And that, my friends, is our wholesome PP story. If you enjoyed, smash the like button. Again, special thanks to our patrons. Galva Gaming, Tristan, Mandalore, Sir William, 1767, Darth Revan, Granddaddy Ben, Cullen Rooney, The Last Jedi, Apollo, Wee Wee 670, Anika Stank Runner, CT7567, Oz of Oz, Darth Knox, Eternal Padawan, Joshua Tem, Johnny Naguin, Saints of Skeleton, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Lord Cali, Gunly Slayer 66, Mammoth Studios, Anakin 003, Lord Draken, Fortis Legacy, Star Wars, Erebus, Rex the Wolf, The Man, Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing for supporting the channel. Smash the like button. Happy holidays to you all. I hope you all enjoyed this holiday special video. I love you all. Spread the love. And always remember, my friends, may the Force be with you.